What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode here on Rivals and Adversaries. However, today, guys, we are starting on to phase two of season one, meaning we're going to go ahead and switch over to the MiG-15, the rival of the F-86. Now, last time I went ahead and finished off my Saber, and it was such a fun model kit, but I have a feeling this one isn't going to be as much fun. But we'll go ahead and give it a try and see what we can do. Now, this is the 148 scale trumpeter MiG-15. This is the upgraded MiG-15, the BIS version. And we're going to go ahead and just give this thing a good once over and check it out, see what we can do. Now, I know Joe has not been very happy with this kit. There's a lot of fit issues. So hopefully we'll go ahead and get through most of those. And with Joe's help, we should be able to kind of navigate our path to get this kit finished up. Now, in terms of markings, we have actually two different ones we can use, one of which is the Russian camo version. We also have the natural metal North Korean version. Inside the box, we have a very nice set of instructions. Very detailed, very nicely drawn out. We are given a full engine, and I'm kind of leaning towards pulling the engine out and not putting it in because I don't want this to be any more tail heavy. It's a very short kind of stubby aircraft, so I want to make sure I can get enough weight up at the front nose. We are given two different schemes. Like I mentioned, we have our natural metal, and we have our camo version. But if you notice the box art right here, this is not an option for our schemes, which have been really cool because it's got that awesome red nose. So that's interesting. I've never actually built a model before that didn't have the front box art as an option for building. Moving on here guys, we are given a piece of film that would represent the gauges here on our instrument panel, so that's interesting. We have some decently clean clear parts, which is awesome. We are given a clear instrument panel, which I guess would be the backing for the film. We go ahead and place the film on top of this backing and then go ahead and sandwich that. So we'd have like a 3D version of our instrument panel. But I don't think I'll be using this because I've actually decided to pick up the photo etch set by Edward for this particular model. It looks nice and all, but I wanna go ahead and do something a bit different. But let's go ahead and move into the other parts and pieces and see what we have to look forward to. Now, right off the bat, the plastic looks decent. If you look here at the cockpit sidewall, we do have some molded in wires and panels and whatnot. It could use a bit of extra sprucing up, so that's why I've got the photo wet set. Fuselage looks okay as well. We have finely recessed panel lines, but the fuselage itself is actually four pieces. So that's gonna make getting this thing together and erasing some of the seams a very challenging undertaking for sure. So we're going to have to see how that turns out. Looking at the tail, this trailing edge at the wing root is actually incorrect. It's too tapered. It should be more angular. Again, nicely recessed panel lines, but we also have some flash, as you can see right there. Just little bits and pieces we need to go ahead and remove. We are given a couple of different options for ordnance. We have our drop tanks and we have some slipper tanks. Probably won't use either of those. And this is going to be the real problem area right here. This is a modular design and it has the air brakes, so we actually attach that separately. We've got a little bit of detail in here, and then the rear section will be blanked off by either the air brakes or by the tail cone. Now, the tail cone itself does need some cleanup as well. As you can see, we've got some flash right here on the end of that nozzle. Really a hobby knife to just kind of rotate around inside and cut it out. It looks okay, but we will have to go ahead and clean up the area. This is actually a nice part, though. I hate to go ahead and wedge it into the model because you're never going to see it, so I might want to go ahead and kind of hold on to that and maybe replace this with something else, some other form of tubing. It's got a really nice-looking engine. Engine, lots of details, lots of parts and pieces. So it'd be kind of cool maybe later on to set this up as an engine as a standalone model. That might be kind of interesting to do. Now, in terms of armament, we're given the standard armament of 37 millimeter cannon and then two 23 millimeter cannons. And this is going to take a lot of cleanup and some drilling out because we do have some openings right there at the barrel and that need to be drilled out. So that's going to be a little bit more challenging. And then the 23 millimeter cannons do require some cleanup and of course, some drilling out of the barrels to get them looking a little bit better. Now for the wings themselves, again, much like like the rest of the aircraft, finely recessed panel lines, a good amount of detail that is needed, hatches and whatnot. But we do have these little burrs around the plastic. So you can see we've got one on the leading edge here. So that's not great. It's going to require some cleanup. But otherwise, though, the plastic itself, the panel lines look pretty good. On the top portion of the wings, we have the wing fences. One outboard wing fence is actually installed already, molded in there. And then the inner wing fence needs to be installed. We'll also notice that we have two different ejection seats right here. And I think that's because this is probably a common sprue for the two seats. MiG-15 trainer version. So we might have a couple of parts we don't actually use. Detail for the flaps look pretty decent. I don't think I'll be using these necessarily in the extended position, but we'll see once we get there. The fit may be so bad, I just go ahead and throw them in there and just leave them open. The wheels are single piece wheels, nicely molded, so that's good. And then of course we have our wheel bays and they have a good amount of detail for the gear bay doors and then the inside of the flaps and of course the landing gear bays. They need a little bit of work there. Some extra wires will go a long way, but at least we know it doesn't look too bad. Now for the decals, as you can see here we only have two schemes we can use. One is a camo Russian version and one is a natural metal North Korean version. I was actually reading some online articles 
regarding the North Korean markings. You'll notice that there are some that have the white disc and some that don't have any white disc, just the star and the bars around it. I've actually read that if you were a Chinese pilot or a North Korean pilot, your markings would be the one with the white disc. If you are a Russian pilot flying for North Korea, you would actually delete that white disc in there and you would have just the red star with the red and blue outlines around the outside of the circle. I don't know if that's exactly true, but that's what I've read there. I believe it was on Aircraft Resource Center. So it might be true. It might not be. I don't really know. But if that is the case, the version that I'm looking to build was actually piloted by a Chinese pilot. So that would actually fit with that meta. And we also, of course, have the red stars, but we won't be doing the Russian version. We're going to stick with the North Korean version unless something happens. Now for paint, I'm intending on using more Allclad. I had a great time with Allclad on the Saber, so I'm hoping that we follow the exact same procedure. We'll be able to get something decent out of this one. And again, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go ahead and polish out and try to fill all the openings. It's going to be tough though, because this model looks like it has some doozies too. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all goes together. I could also come in and just paint it more uniform silver color because sometimes they were painted up with a lacquer with aluminum powder in it. So it would actually erase that panel variance. But I think I'm going to stick with Alclad and see what I can do with that. Now I want to do something a little bit different here, guys. Usually I just give you a look at the model kit and we go ahead and start the construction on the next episode. But I wanted to try something out. I was talking to Joe about this particular kit and he said he had to pose the air brakes open because they just didn't fit very well. And a lot of write-ups I have seen as well that show this kit do show the air brakes open. But I haven't seen that same thing represented in the references. So I want to go ahead and see how badly these are out of whack. Real quick, we're going to take this rear modular section. We're going to go ahead and clean it up with our jeweler files. We're going to take off any of the burrs, clean up some of the openings here and there. And then I want to go ahead and see if I could just cut out one of the air brakes and place it in here to get these things closed up because I'd really like to go ahead and tuck everything in if I can. So grabbing our flush cuts, let's go ahead and grab one of these air brakes. And without doing any cleanup, let's go ahead and drop it in there and see what it does. So yeah, okay, it does fit, but yeah, not well. There's actually a large gap around the actuator area there at the hinges, and there's also a gap along the bottom of the air brake. And again, we do need to come back and clean up some of the edges of it on the top and rear section, clean up any of the extra little sprue attachments, any flash, anything that might inhibit this dropping into place. This is a natural panel line though, so I don't want to go ahead and just erase the panel lines. I do want some demarcation between the air brake and the fuselage. So a little bit of a panel line is okay, but if it's too thick, we'll have to go ahead and replace maybe parts of it with some styrene, maybe come in with some Mr. Surfacer and just minimize that seam so that we have an impression of there being a seam there, but without it actually being a giant gaping hole. And we can get this in here. A little bit of cleanup, it does drop into place. Again, it's not great man the fit on this isn't spectacular at all we can get this in here a little bit of cleanup it does drop into place so you know what why don't we go ahead and glue it and then we'll move on to the other one so a little bit of extra thin to me right around the edges and especially around the pivot points there on the front of the air brake let's go ahead and grab the other side as well cut that air brake out and we'll go ahead and just go right into some cleanup test fit that and see what we can do with this one again it's not an easy kit it's not a shake and bake kit it's going to take some time it's going to take some patience the more effort i put in now the better off my paint and my finishing process will be that held true with the saber so i'm assuming it'll hold true here so let's go ahead and glue this air brake in we'll move on and I'll give you guys a look at what we come up with okay just a real quick close-up you can see these air brakes are glued in place and already you can tell there's large gaps here at the hinge points there's a little bit of gap along the bottom of the air brake and on the other side as well we might be able to come in here and just kind of sand this down and fill in a little bit of the area with mr surfacer to eliminate that larger gap we might be able to cut out these hinges and replace them with a small strip of styrene just so that we have something that looks like it's supposed to be there i'll have to do some research figure out my references but you can see there are some definite gaps here around the air brake well so it's going to take a little bit of time to clean that up let's go ahead and talk references now i actually don't have any paper references for the mig 15. instead all my references are ebooks on my phone or on my computer. So we're gonna have to go ahead and just go through all of these different eBooks, read up on the MiG-15, find some good pictures, find some good references, and then we can come back next episode and we'll continue with the construction process. Just from looking at those air brakes, I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be more indicative of the entire kit. A lot of the parts are gonna need cleanup, a lot of the seams are gonna need some filling. We're gonna need to dry fit a ton of times, make sure that everything is ready to go before we commit to glue. It's not gonna be a shake and bake kit, it won't be necessarily easy, but we'll go ahead and next episode get in there 
there, see what else we can do. I'll get my photo wet set by that point. We can start working on that cockpit and hopefully this thing turns out decently. Until next episode, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, and build something cool. Make sure to go check out Joe's channel. I know he's going to be spooling up on that F-86 soon. And we'll see you back here on the next episode of Rivals and Adversaries for Phase 2 and our MiG-15. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.